Friday Night Blitz is brought to you by Rock Oil Refining Incorporated. Your Blitz starts now. Welcome to the Friday Night Blitz. I'm Saul Meyer, and that is my partner, Drew Chelly. Drew, some massive games tonight, wouldn't you say? Oh, for sure. The stakes were high, and we had some conference titles on the line. The Merwood Conference had a chance to be won tonight, but we'll get to that later and start with our game of the week. Last year's great Northern Conference winner and runner-up were Mosinee and Medford, respectively, and this year it is the same matchup. Newswatch 12's Will Harrelton was at the game, and here he is behind us right here where the fate of the GNC was decided. All right, Will, did Mosinee repeat, or was it Medford who retook the Great Northern Conference at home? Well, guys, it was a cold and wet evening here in Medford, but that did not stop how Mosinee performed. They had a solid all-around performance as they won this high-stakes GNC affair 14 to nothing. They came into this one and really set the tone right away as their defense really shut down the Raiders all night long. Head coach Kyle Stoffel said that coming into tonight's game, shutting down Medford's run game was the key. Well, obviously the game plan is to slow down their run. Um, if, if you can make them pass, I think that's our advantage. Obviously they had some success throwing the ball more than I thought they would, but um, yeah, if you can take the run away from them, um, you got a good chance to beat these guys. This Mosinee team started the year with a tough home loss to Stratford, but now has won seven straight games by double digits. Coach Stoffel says this was a complete team effort. I'm, I'm extremely proud. If you would have told me I was going to come in here tonight and get a shutout um, against a team like this, I, I would have told you you're crazy. But um, we stepped up. We've been playing defense like crazy the last six weeks now, and uh, couldn't be more proud of these guys and uh, extremely happy. As I mentioned before, Mosinee clinched a share of the GNC title, which is their seniors class's third conference title. They are now getting ready to finish off the regular season against Merrill before they head into the playoffs. Back to you guys. Well, congrats to Mosinee on winning the great Northern Conference. Those two teams have been battling it out all season long, and now they're looking forward to the playoffs. Yeah, it was a collision course, but it wasn't the only GNC game going on tonight. Lakeland Union hosted Hayward, where a win for the T-Birds would put them in a great spot to finish third in the conference. The Hayward Hurricanes paid a visit to Lakeland Union to try to snap the T-Birds' three-game win streak. We start in the first quarter, Lakeland's Hakeem Berkland would pick off Hayward for what would almost be a pick six. He's going to get pushed out of bounds inside the one-yard line, setting up first and goal for Lakeland. Noah Bruckner would capitalize on the pick, scoring on the two-yard touchdown run on the very next play. Lakeland would go on to win this one 20-11, extending their win streak to four games and qualifying for the postseason. Now to Crandon, where the 7-2 Cardinals host the 7-2 Oconto Falls Panthers first quarter. Oconto Falls with the ball. A little trickery here, but it's snuffed out by that Cardinals defense. Panthers forced a punt. Now to the end of the first quarter. Cardinals down 6-0, but here comes Mason Mullins in that power T offense. He takes the handoff, cuts upfield, and he is gone. Touchdown, Cardinals. They even it up at six apiece. But tonight would ultimately be the Panthers' night. In the second quarter, bobbled snap is no problem for former WIS Sports Athlete of the Week's Alex Haynes. He busts the game wide open for this 45-yard touchdown run. Kanto Falls wins it 32-20. Grandin will finish off their season next week at Coleman. We got some area scores for you. Tomahawk went on the road tonight. They posted a shutout and a 7 0 win over Westfield. Spash, man, they're rolling. They kept their conference run going on the road at Marshfield. They posted a 28 0 shutout to grab the win. Stratford continues another solid season. They're going for another state championship with a 50, 56 to nothing win over Wyoiga Fremont. We'll be right back after the break. Friday Night Blitz is brought to you by Rock Oil Refining Incorporated. Your Blitz starts now. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. I'm Saul Meyer, and that is Drew Chelly. Drew, we already saw one conference champion crown today with Mose and Ewan in the GNC. But what about the Merrillwood Conference? Edgar dropped their week one matchup to Ellsworth, and they have not looked back. The Wildcats have not given up a point in conference play all season long and a win at home against Auburndale would clinch their spot as the final Merrillwood Conference champions in history. 
Auburndale on the road. They're going to try to spoil Edgar's senior night. We're going to start in the first quarter. Edgar going to take an early shot downfield. But it's going to result in an interception. It's going to be picked off by Blake Rabb. Auburndale going to make the first big defensive play of the night. Edgar would get the ball back right away. Tegan Strike in a roll out of the pocket. He's going to throw back across the field to Jace Appleback, who's going to make the catch. He's going to add some yards after that. And he's going to pick up a first down. That drive would end in six. Carter Butt going to punch it in from a yard out. Edgar posts their sixth shutout in a row. They win this one 41 to nothing. And let's stay in the Merrillwood Conference for one of the biggest rivalries, Abbotsford hosting Colby. In the first quarter, Abbotsford showing off that defense. Fake jet sweep and the QB keeps it, but Abby doesn't fall for it one bit. A swarm of Falcons come in to make the tackle on the great defensive play. That forces a fourth and nine. However, on that fourth and nine, halfback draw to Gavin Voss, who goes enough yards untouched, makes a few guys miss, and is finally brought down, but not after getting a Hornets first down. Later that drive, it's Voss again. Voss water, and he powers his way into the end zone for a Colby touchdown, and they're going to go on to win this rivalry game 49-14. to Pittsville on the road as they're going to take on, or they took on the Marathon Red Raiders. We're going to start in the second quarter. Pittsfield, little read option QB keeper, and they block it well. They're going to pick up the first down. Later in the drive, though, they're going to turn it over. They're going to go deep, but this one is a floater. It is picked off by Cooper Huxima, and he's going to return this one back all the way to the 45. It would give Marathon a chance to drive before halftime. Last play of the first half, Huxima is going to run around a bit in the pocket, and then he's going to fling one to Truthers. Yes, Truthers, what a name, and he's going to do the rest. Touchdown on the last play of the half. Marathon goes on to win this one, 30. 322. And a Merrillwood Conference team in every sport except football. Athens in action, hosting Greenwood. In the second quarter, check out the trickeration from the Blue Jays. Nobody knows who has it until Evan Paseo is already 20 yards down the field, and he's going to go ahead and waltz his way into the end zone on the monster touchdown run. And first on offense, now on defense, it's Paseo laying the boom for the Blue Jays. And why not give it to this kid again? Next offensive position. Possession. Who else? It's Paseo. He's off to the races and he cannot be stopped. We're going to call it an unofficial 92 yard house call and Athens took over. They win this one 50 to 6. And after all those Merrillwood Conference games, let's check out the standings for the Merrillwood Conference in their final season. With their win over Auburndale, Edgar has now won the conference and are the final Merrillwood Conference champions in history. The rest of the field isn't set, though, with one more week left of football. Next week, Colby and Auburndale will face off in a battle for second and third place. Following them is the team Colby just beat, their rival Abbotsford, and then Marathon, who are tied for fourth place after going three and three so far this season in Merrillwood games. And in last place is Pittsville, who is only one game behind Marathon and Abbotsford. So with all those games coming up next week, it is sure to be an exciting one in the final week for Merrillwood Conference games ever. Yeah, what a great bunch of games we covered tonight, Saul. Absolutely, Drew. The regular season wraps up next week, but a lot of conference champions were crowned tonight, too. Yeah, and we saw two very impressive teams, Mosinee and Edgar, each oh, they take good. care of business. They look I mean, good. Impressive victories. I mean, congratulations to both those teams. Well-deserved conference oh, yeah. champions. No flukes there. The rest of the conference titles will be decided next week. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Saul Meyer for Drew Jelly. Y'all have a great night.